Hello guys and welcome back to another Model Railway Locomotive Review. And yes, I don't think I've ever done one that quickly. Well, actually, I probably have actually. Because I've had quite a few in one go. But you know what I mean. Uh, basically, but another one. Because, um, yeah. And it's an LMS Loco. Finally, another one. Uh, but it's also one of my favourite tank engines. I absolutely love these. It is the Fowler 4P. Uh, tank. Uh, unfortunately, there isn't any of these in preservation. Uh, it is a pity. But it's a 264, my first 264 tank engine. I was going to get one eventually. Uh, there's a lot of 264s though, so I will end up with quite a lot of 264 wheel configuration locomotives. Um, but yes, finally another LMS loco. Um, and this is a beautiful one. This is a slightly more modern Hornby. It's got the older packaging though, uh, but it's still super modern. It's got some decent detail, which we'll run through in a second. Uh, but I'll tell you where I got this from. I got this from Carnforth Model Shop. In, on Carnforth train. It was a bargain at just £51. Um, so, 15% discount on pre-owned pre models. So, yes. Um, but Mint runs perfectly well. So, we will run through this today. Give it a bit of a review. And, yeah. A uh, bit of a running session later on. And I'll run it with the middle and compound. Because then we can have a bit of a so, it'd be nice. Right, let's get to it. Right, the detail first, and we will start at the front. Now, as you can see, it is a very well detailed loco. You've got the very well printed um, number and shed code on the front. You've got separately fitted um, handrails and little lamp brackets and stuff. That is separately fitted there. It's very small. Um, you've got the vacuum pipe separately fitted. You've got the other lamp lines. Um, you have also got these lovely oval sprung buffers. I do like an oval buffer. I think they're quite cool, different, they're very unique. Um, one of only two locos I've got with sprung oval buffers. I do have the Duke of Gloucester which has them, but they're not sprung. Um, the Thompson 01 uh, is the other loco that I have with sprung um, oval buffers, but on the tenders, Duke of Gloucester and the o Thompson 01 have circle buffers. This has oval at the back as well because it's a tank engine, so it's very cool. It's also my largest tank engine as well. well um, right, next, we have lots of riveted detail across the top. That is very nicely done. I like that a lot. You struggle, you'd struggle to see that, really. Um, you've got all this pipe work here. You've got the metal handrail on the front. You've got all this lovely copper coloured pipe work. Now, it is plastic, but it's painted very nicely and it's very noticeable um, and really sets the loco off. More moulded detail everywhere. You've got metal safety valves and whistles, which look fantastic. Um, more moulded detail all over the place. Now the lining is LMS lined black, um, so it's the black loco. I do like this livery, um, I think it's stunning. And then you've got the red lining which really sets the loco off nicely. You've got LMS printed into the gold. Um, you do have a builder's plate there, it is legible. I believe it says LMS um, built 1928 Derby. But I don't know whether it's 28 or 38. 38 for me seemed too late, so I guess it was um, 28. Linkage is phenomenal. Look at all of that. It is superb watching it go around. I like the fact that the wheels are sort of like further forward than you would expect them to be because obviously it's a 264. Uh, the 4 is to hold this massive coal bunk at the back. Uh, but I think it's really unique and I really like unique sort of locos. I know this won't be to everyone's taste, but it is to mine. Uh, you've got the... Um, strength code there for P. It is the class of loco is the Fowler 4P, but it is actually a 4P in strength, same as the middle and compound, which we'll see later on. Um, so it is quite a hefty beast, but considering the size, it's not that strong really if you think about it. But it is what it is. Still very nice for a tank engine. 4P is pretty decent, in my opinion. Um, in the cab, it you have painted a detail which is very difficult to see because of how enclosed the cab actually is. Now, I can't really get in there to see it. There you go. Can a little bit there. Look at that. All that lovely painted details in such an enclosed cab. You do have glazing on the front and back of the windows. Um, it's got this sort of grill effect on the back. Looks fantastic. Massive coal bunker now. I don't think that's removable. It could be, but I don't think it is. Um, but because of the shape, I assume that would be quite easy to cut out if you was bothered about that. Um, I'm not, so... I'm happy with the coal. It looks very realistic, so um, it's fine. But if you wanted to put real coal in, I think you'll be able to. Um, the back, you've also got a builder's plate. Um, on, oh, no, it's not a builder's plate. It's the um, capacity for the coal bunker. 
you've got all the lining across the back and along the side here across the top of the cab you've got 2321 printed nice that's the running number spring buffers on the back oval buffers very nice spin it around uh, bang there you go there's no coupling hook on the front because it didn't come with a spare one but i don't like coupling hooks on the front of locos much anyway um most of my locos don't as you'll notice look there are a few with them if they are on the front they are small couplings they're not very big um i try to keep my nicest and biggest locos without them um so this for example doesn't have one and won't um uh, but it is very nice indeed uh, you have the nice little boiler lining there there isn't any here or here it's probably too difficult it's not supposed to but you have it on the front and the back and it looks fantastic for that because all of the lining across here uh, lms printed nicely and then two three two one again 4p there is no none of that piping on this side you just have the metal handrail on the side as well lots of molded detail as usual uh, the wheel set is nice it is a bit dated so you do have the axles poking out but it's not too obvious it looks fine um mainly because the black wheels if it was something a bit like of a brighter color like green something it would probably be a little bit less uh, a bit more noticeable because of where the wheels are and the fact that they're covered a lot as well um i don't see that as an issue there's other locos i have with that and i don't see the issue really it's not too obvious and doesn't detract too much to the model especially because of the age as well because it is a bit of an older model but not I wouldn't say it's that far back from modern standards because it's very good. Uh, you can see the Daika chassis poking through. It is quite a heavy locomotive uh, for the size. Um, there's a lot of weight over the wheels, the driving wheels. So because it's well balanced, it is a strong beast. Um, oh, you also have a lot of little painted detail on the front of the water tanks there. Look at that. It's nice, isn't it? Looks fantastic. Right. Um, there's probably more detail that I've missed, but it is what it is. Uh, we will now pop this onto the track and see how it runs. Okay, it is now on the track, so what we're going to do is just test the slow speed and stuff now. See what this is like. Now, this is an older model and stuff, and it is pre-owned, so... It is moving. That's not bad. It's quite smooth as well, it's not cogging. It's driven via the middle axle, um, I think, so. That isn't even cogging, that's good, isn't it? It is a bit slow in the reverse, so it's more difficult for it to turn. Like, quicker on that way, so. That's spectacularly good for this sort of age of model. Don't down the points. Cut out on the points there. It's two dead zones, they're close to each other, so it's quite a test. That's full speed in reverse. It's a bit slower in reverse than it is forwards. It's probably just the gearing. It's pretty quick though. I'm on feedback, it runs a little bit quieter on non feedback. Um can hear the feedback, but the feedback is slightly better uh, for this logo. Uh, it's not callless, so you can run it on feedback controller, so it is what it is. Um, so yeah, that is the Fowler 4P. Uh, we will get this running in a second. I will just grab the compound and we'll have a bit of a running session. Bit of a size comparison with the compound. That's a tender logo. Look at the size of the uh, Fowler 4P. It's massive. Yep, they are both 4Ps. You can see there's a little strength rating of 4 on the compound there. Um, so they've got the same strength rating. Uh, obviously, this is Midland Compound number one thousand, the preserved example, the only preserved example, and a national collection in miniature loco. So quite rare, quite expensive, uh, and incredibly beautiful in that livery. You can get the four P in that livery, but I was like, you know, I think that that livery is mainly reserved for bigger locos. There are a couple I like in that livery, but I really wanted a LMS lime black as well. So gives it that more tank engine style. So. Might get a red one eventually, though. You never know. Might get two, because I'm obsessed. But, yeah, anyway, um, it is what it is. So, let's get these two running together and have a bit of a running session. 
Okay, let's set the middle and compound off first because it's the one that hasn't ran for quite a while. Let's get that nicely warmed up. It hasn't ran for ages, the middle and compound, and I genuinely mean ages. It's not ran for donkeys. It's running nicely. It is beautiful though, isn't it? The LMS Crimson Lake, the river. It's actually a Midland Railway locomotive that's pre-grouping a little bit older. And now for the Fowler 4P. Wasn't connected to its coaches. I'll let you off there, Loco, that wasn't your fault. Oh, the coupling's at the wrong height. There you go. I've had to put the BR Maroon coaches on because they don't have any more LMS coaches but also because the Midland compound is running with the LMS coaches. Um, so, even though I would ordinarily run the Fowler with those coaches, those LMS ones, because they look fantastic with it. Running nicely. And it's actually running higher on the controller, um, but around the same speed. There's not much in the terms of it's basically got like a super fast mode that this local has not yet hit, so it's running nicely. It's probably about the same as that for half speed, to be fair. It is running nicely. Could probably do with running in a bit, to be honest. Because um, it's not around for probably quite a while, I assume. But it is running very, very smoothly, very, very nicely. It was running for quite a while, straight in the model shop that I picked it up for while we was having a bit of a train spot with some Class 90s. Um, so, it has been running decently well, so... Thick. LMS livery is so beautiful. I need more LMS locos because I do like them a lot. I like them more than Great Western, and I have more Great Western locos than any other. Um, but I do like LMS a hell of a lot, so I need to get more locos, obviously. And I will be doing that. That's going to be my mission: is to get more LMS, more diesels. Um, I know I recently got another LNR loco. There it is, gorgeous Thompson 01. Please check that review out if you haven't already. Great loco, but. I do need to get more LMS, because I don't have many. Something is off. The coach, oh dear, we're going to have a disaster. We've had a disaster. I don't know how that's happened. That was a coach that came off the couplings aren't at the right height, which I assume is probably the couplings, the, uh, the NEM, I know he was looking at some cupboards then, the NEM coupling isn't, is like, is too low, so I think it was dragging it off, I might have to slow the uh, Fowler down a little bit, a little bit for slower speed, or well, tank engine speed anyway. So we're going to nice hit that speed, just so we can keep an eye on things. So probably the rear bogey swung too far for the controller, uh, for the other coupling and basically made it a little bit unstable so it's possibly what it was. Runs fine with the LMS coaches anyway. It's probably those NEM couplings on the coach, coaches though, they are a little bit dodgy. Um, my friend Kelly Ashford will probably um, be bringing some stuff along. I think she's bringing some more LMS coaches along for me. She has some LMS coaches she doesn't need, so I might be able to get some proper coaches for this now as well. So hopefully that'll, that'll help us nicely out. Middle and running a little bit more express speed, but it is a tender loco and they are not notable. Wait, they are very first in reality. The uh, Final 4P is running a little bit more branch line sort of speed, which is what it was sort of designed for. Um, so running very nicely though at that speed. Runs good at any speed though, to be honest. Just problem with the problematic coach couplings. I'm going to blame the coaches because they're always causing issues. Coaches, so it's running very nicely, very smooth. Nothing wrong with it at all. Running beautifully. There's the middle end. Running very nicely as well. It's a lot first, obviously. And there it is, it is beautiful though, look at that. It's just such got a it's got such a presence to it and I love it. Right, let's stop the middle and compound. That's coming round. 
I was not in shot. Neither was that. And finally the Fowler 4P. There we go. Yes. Great loco. One of my, uh, might be my favourite tank engine now. I do apologise, Adam's radio tank. No, I do like the Adam's actually. Uh, but it was a bag in this. Fantastic loco. It's very well detailed, especially for its age. Fantastic model overall. Would I recommend getting one? Yes, I would. Uh, try and get yourself a bargain. But they are actually quite expensive because there's not very many of them. They're quite difficult to find. So if you find one and it's cheap, get one. Um, no matter the livery because they're beautiful and anything. So yeah. Um, fantastic loco. Welcome addition to the collection. We're now on 47 locomotives. Going to get to 50 soon, hopefully. Um, but anyway, until the next one, I'll see you very soon for some more videos. Goodbye.